You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. Sheikh Abu Abdullah, Sheikh Abu Hakim Abdullah, excuse me. Present Chairman of Al Masjid Sharia Allah, AMSA, an Islamic program operating in the state of Rhode Island. which has been an organization for some years here in Rhode Island. And I've been doing this program for some years. When I left you this, I was talking to you about Sharia, fears of Muslims, fears of non-believers. I want to get something straight with all you, all everybody. Especially with Muslims, trying to be friends with those that Allah tells us not to be friendly with. At this time, Muslims should be established, should be trying to establish their own, their own thing, their own environment, their own schools, their own tailor shops and other things, their own laundries, places where their children can play, relax, and don't be intimidated by other people's ideas. Now, like I always said, the Christian way of life and the Muslim way of life is not alike. They're completely different from each other. In our world of life, we're told that people that, that speak blasphemy against the law is an enemy of the law. And that the law cuts all those people, cuts them, put curses on them. We do not accept Jesus Christ, Salaam Alaikum as anything other than a, a prophet. We don't consider him the son of God. We don't consider Mary the son of God, the mother of God, excuse me, the mother of God. We don't go along with that three and one thing. And those kind of things is what separates us because the Christian believe that Jesus Christ Salaam Alaikum is the Son of God and we don't accept that you 
That's one of the reasons why we should be on different trails, why we can't hang out together. That's one of the reasons. Because we take that as a crime that say that God has some sons and daughters and stuff like that. And Jesus said, I come from your father, which is my father, which is, my, which is my, our father in heaven. He didn't mean that literally, that he came down from, from some guy that was his father. That's the way everybody's taking it. And then there's another thing that we got to deal with. That, is, that people say, you don't do what, you're not following, that God came down, that Jesus came here to sacrifice his life for everybody else. He gave up his life for other people. And by doing so, they erased all their sins. Well, that's another thing we don't go, we don't accept. Another thing why we are on different sides of the road. Now, I got acquaintances that are Christian. And um, we don't talk about the religion that much. We don't talk about the religion with each other. And we don't get that personally involved with each other. But we help each other as human beings, especially as neighbors. I live in an area where I'm the only Muslim that I know of in this the block I live on. So there is some people here that law has sent to me to give me help in what I'm trying to do here with the program. My help with this program came from people, I don't think they're Christians. I never asked them whether they Christians or not. But I know they're not admitted Muslims. I don't know what's in their heart, but by the help that they gave me, that Allah sent to me when there was nobody else trying to give me any, It's very appreciated by me and I learned a lot from what they gave me and they always try to give me the most respect not only for my age but for who I was or who I am. They know about what they know about me trying to work to work along for Islam. They know about my work for Islam. And they realize they they have helped me with the program on the on the internet. Matter of fact, 75, 80, 85 percent of the things that I know about the internet, they're the ones that taught it to me and showed me how to use it. They also helped me put the programs that you're looking at on the internet. And they know about the laws that I'm under. A lot of laws. They know about a lot of laws that I'm under. And they respect those laws.
and I give them respect as being my neighbors. But I'm telling you all this to tell you, let you know that Allah said in Quran and Hadith through the Prophet Muhammad that that he would send help to you, help to us from places that we don't know that they could, where they're coming from. That he would send believers as well as non-believers to assist you. You must know, you must realize that when that's happening. So I take it as if Allah has sent them people there to help me. And I let them know that. And there's a lot of other people that are Christian that have been sent to help me and I let them know that also. And I believe they know that. I'm not saying now that Muslims have not given me the help they should. But I'm saying that I didn't receive that help from a great many of Muslims. Those that are supposed to be aiding my work. Now my work, I'm going to explain to you what I, what I do. I shouldn't have to explain it to you, but you see it, you hear it. I'm, in, I'm working now in the defense of Islam. I'm fully working in the defense of Islam and the followers of Islam, the true, the true followers of Islam, those that are buying by Allah's words those that are obedient to Allah. And those that are not trying to get over with Allah. There's many people that's trying to destroy Islam as we know it and make it something that will be conducive to the way they live in, especially the non-Muslims. They want the Muslim to just be a spiritual believer in their way of life. And that we can't be. All those that say they they that way, what they call it, what they call it now, the moderates. All the so-called moderates. Bismillahim. Alhamdulillah. All the moderates. Bismillah. Or, or, or all the people that's trying to make their deen an acceptable way of life to the Christians and the non-believers and the Buddhists and everything else and walk around here trying to please the people that's not Muslim. have violated their way of life and are violating it. You cannot just pray and fast in Islam. There's more to it than that. You cannot just go without food 
and do everything else at the same time you fasting, and you're supposed to be on fasting, and it's on. Islam, Islam, Islam doesn't only have physical or spiritual laws and regulations, which we call Sharia. It has physical Sharia. Once you become a Muslim, Once you become a Muslim. And to just practice the prayers and not the physical parts of the deen is not right. Because the law says there's more to the deen and as you pray it five times a day. Or you make it a hodge. There's a physical part of our real life because without having both sides of a human being, in a belief, you don't have anything. There is no such thing as half of Islam. And anybody that think it is, is a fool. And not really understanding their way of life. This is what's happening today, now, today. A lot of people are walking around physical Islam, spiritual Islam. And they call themselves a modern, modern Muslim. Dealing with Islam in today's way of life and not in yesterday's way of life. You can't change Islam like that. To make a fatwa, a, a rule, a regulation in Islam, it's most likely it's got to be something that wasn't there before and you make a law on it, a rule on that. But you cannot change anything. You cannot take anything from Islam and replace it with something else. Because Islam was completed by Allah to the Prophet Muhammad, al Islam. And he was given all authority to practice it. And we were told to emulate him. And even though he went to a law, we still are emulating him in our prayers, in our mannerism, in our speech, in our eating, in the way we handle ourselves, the way we pick up stuff, the clothes we wear, all that is emulating the Prophet Muhammad Silas Allah. And to call yourself a moderate A new, uh, 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 up-to-date Muslim, as a, uh, let me put it that way, an uh, up-to-date Muslim. It's, it's not following him.
So I just want to say this all to you, you brothers and sisters, because it's getting out of hand now. Many people are trying to put us in a spiritual way of life. Let's take, for instance, the so-called spring revolution or whatever they call that thing that just happened in Egypt and around the world and other Muslim countries. The spring something. Those people did not go against the king, the president of Egypt. Because his Islam was not right. They went along, they went against him. Because he was not taking care of them with jobs and engineering jobs and other jobs and other things that he was supposed to be doing for them. And the same thing that happened with Hussein. They want democracy, the democratic system of living in, um, uh, in, in Egypt. They want a democratic system of living in, 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 in Libya. They want a democratic system living in, 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 in Indonesia. And who wants this democratic system? Well, it's the young college students that want the democratic system, the same that kidnapped and held the people that was in Iran, that been on a revolutionary drive in Iran against the shore, and his family. Because that's when it first happened. And there's other states that's doing the same thing, did the same thing. And then, when this went down, committee and these people seen the opportunity to bring Shia Islam in a position of being the rulers of Iran, 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 Iran. So this is what's happening today. You got people today now, now you got the same kind of riots that's beginning to happen in Egypt all over again. All over again in Egypt because the brotherhood, they feel like the brotherhood is making plans to bring the Islamic State underneath the Sharia into Egypt. Now, if the Brotherhood is going to bring an Islamic State under the rules of this book, 
and the hadith of, of, the, of the Prophet Muhammad That's what they should do. But if they're going to bring it, the Islamic State into being and become a terrorist bank, a terrorist place, then that's not what they should do. But the people are saying now that they want Islam and democracy together. You cannot do that. It will not work. You will have brothers out there and brothers and sisters literally killing each other. I'm telling you like it is. Because when it comes down to delivering punishment and rules and everything and what you cannot have and what you should have, that's when it's going to be arguments. See, I blame that all on us. I blame that on us. Because we're so busy trying to take the monies that we have, the oil monies and all that kind of stuff, and build a physical United States or England or France and without the manufacturing and the development and colleges and other things going on. And you can't do that. So we did not build an Islamic environment of manufacturing, of development, financial development, all these kind of things. We did not do that. And in some countries, we took our country and, did, and, and, and made the development programs to satisfy and to be servants to disbelief, the money parts of disbelief, the millionaire people, the rich, the businessman of the Western world. That's what we did. And that's what we're doing today. And, the, and we're bringing all kinds of sports and stuff that is contrary to this book into our cities. At the same time, we want to deliver the Sharia into our cities on one level and take the Sharia that says we shouldn't deal with this on, on, and hide that on another level. And so there is no Islamic state being done, no Islamic thing. We got horse racing on a big level in a lot of, in a lot of cities. We got automobile racing we got boxing going on with people in the ring, naked, banging on each other. We got basketball players running around half naked, playing basketball. We got all this stuff going on. We got hotels that are catering to disbelief. Oh! <laughs>